Hello, uh, my name is Lulwa Naimi. I'm the Director of Strategic Planning and Projects at Qatar National Library. Um, my dear colleagues and partners, good morning and good evening to you. I'm delighted to be here today on behalf of Qatar National Library to present an overview um, uh, about uh, Qatar National Library and its future endeavors. So as you can see, this is, this is a beautiful picture of our uh, state of art building. Um, the idea of Qatar National Library was founded by Her Highness Sheikh Moza bin Nasser, who is also the chairperson of Qatar Foundation, and um, uh, back in 2012. As you see from this picture, the first book was placed in the library in 2017. The library official inauguration uh, happened in April 2018, where we placed also, or His uh, His Highness, uh, the Emir of Qatar, placed the one million book. Today, we have one, more than one million book in our collection. The vision of our library is to be one of the world's preeminent center of learning, research, and culture, and a guardian of the region's heritage, and, and, and an institution that promotes imagination, discovery, and the nourishment of the human spirit. The mission of the, mission of the library is to preserve the nation heritage and, and the region's heritage and enables the people of Qatar to positively influence society by creating an exceptional environment for learning and discovery. The library will achieve its mission by creating and sustaining an intuitive and trusted information environment and in a culturally and technologically exceptional setting and by developing innovative programs and services. In Qatar National Library, we have seven core values. Uh, the first value is openness and transparency with all patrons and organizations that we deal with, where, we, where, where privacy and confidentiality are observed. The second value is education and lifelong learning, where we strive to offer services that facilitate equitable learning. Open access, of course, is one of our uh, very important core values, where we are committed to free, open, unrestricted access to our collections and services. Equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility, respect and fairness, where our, uh, our patrons uh, are, treat, are treated regardless, uh, the same regardless of race, color, sex, gender, and religion, age, genetic information, and all other you know, uh, uh, sources of discrimination. Growth and innovation, where we encourage creativity, continuous learning, experimentation, and generation of ideas, stewardship of all resources, especially of the uh, national and nations and heritage uh, resources of the, of the country. Intellectual freedom, where we are committed to facilitate the free exchange of information and ideas. About Qatar National Library. So Qatar National Library is uh, uh, resembles a true dedication of Qatar leadership to transition um, our economy from oil, uh, from reliance on oil, natural resources, oil and fuel, to a, di a diversified uh, knowledge-based sustainable economy. Um, in Qatar National Library, we provide information uh, resources in different format, both physical and digital, uh, to student researchers and, uh, um, uh, and communities. We provide uh, lifelong learning uh, programs, promote lifelong learning um, lifestyles and um, uh, through events and uh, through um, our exhibitions, uh, conferences and events as well. Uh, host, uh, hosting events, obviously, for all members of the community. Um, um, in Qatar, we have a very diversified uh, uh, community from different uh, groups, and we also try to um, uh, have some outreach activities for um, underserved communities, whether it is people with special needs or people from a certain um, 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 community sector. Qatar National Library has three main functions. Apart from being a national library, we are also a public library and research library. In a national library, um, uh, we, are, we, we are a, st uh, a steward of Qatar's national heritage public library. We provide equal access for all people in an environment that supports creativity and cultural development. Research library will foster and promote um, uh, res the research ecosystem in the country and the region. 
quick facts about the library. Uh, the library building is, is about 45,000 uh, square meters. Um, it's split in three floors. The library, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, have more than 1 million book uh, uh, in many uh, uh, categories. Um, it has also 35,000 uh, 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 meters of uh, compact shelving where it can host up to 800,000 books. We have uh, self-checkout check-in stations, um, and we have uh, drive-through uh, 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 book drop-off stations. Uh, our main you know, uh, feature of uh, uh, library is the technology that is embedded in the library building and the systems that we're using in the library. I will showcase more picture of that during the presentation. Um, we also have plenty of seating around the library. We have around 600 uh, plus different types of seatings uh, um, around the library. Our library is open seven days a week for all publics. Um, again, this is um, our state art building. Um, it might look like a spaceship, but um, I will go through um, uh, uh, shortly uh, over the uh, concept of uh, the design of the building. So um, our building was designed by the renowned architect Ren Kolhaus. Uh, uh, it resembles two pieces of paper that are pulled apart diagonally at the corners to create the, an open plan and the open plan in the middle is the plaza of the library which I will show more pictures of uh, uh, later on. Um, it's a monument uh, to the enduring value of the book designed to ref reflect the progression of knowledge while pointing to the to the past as well. Um, the heritage library resembles uh, the location of the heritage library is in the heart of our library and it resembles uh, an archaeological site, uh, site um, and it is like six meters deep da down the ground level. Um, as I said, like the very interesting feature about, about our library is the innovative technologies used in the library. Here we see some of the spaces of the library. This is our conference room where we host many of our events. Um, this is our uh, digitization uh, uh, labs. Uh, we have state of art digitization labs, and uh, it's one of uh, um, uh, uh, the few ISO recognized uh, digitization labs, uh, labs in the region. Um, some digitization work. This is our preservation and conservation uh, lab. Um, here we have our assistive technology area. Here is our innovation stations. In the library, we have four innovation stations, or in some libraries, they call them maker space. We have a, a one innovation station for music, one innovation station for photography, and one for um, 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 make it your own electronics, 3D mapping, 3D uh, um, um, scanning. Sorry. Um, and also, we have uh, um, um, one um, innovation station for virtual reality. Uh, softwares and uh, devices. Here is the plaza uh, of the library. Um, and, and as you see, it resembles openness. Um, and um, um, you can see also um, the uh, heritage library, which is six meter deep from the ground level. Again, this is a close up uh, to the heritage library. You see us, uh, the, the, the heritage library uh, um, is, uh, is designed uh, to resemble uh, the essence of the past, even the choice of the stone that, that they've used during, uh, sorry, that they've used during the design uh, resembles, uh, um, you know, an aged stone. So uh, the the concept of you know light as a metaphor for knowledge was uh, uh, was um, um, one of the main ideas of the designer when designing the building. Um, do you see that during day uh, daytime we use very minimal lighting in the library? This is the exterior. It allows just enough light for the reader um, to uh, uh, to um, you know provide natural lights, uh, and uh, it's a very sustainable design as well. You see here also the uh, reflective ceiling, which also helps with the lighting in the library. So what we have in library facilities, uh, reading room, collaborative, collaborative spaces, instruction rooms, events, exhibition areas, innovation stations, public computing, children and young uh, adult library, self-check and check-out stations, uh, inf uh, inf infotainment, 
uh, automated book sorter system, digitization cent uh, center, reservation and conservation laboratory, restaurant, and a cafe. Again. So the library uh, collections, we have three main collections. Uh, our main collection, which is printed and journals in all subjects, uh, heritage library, which is a collection, uh, anything that is older than 19, 60 goes automatically to uh, the heritage collection park. We have also children and young adults, which is from the age of zero till the age of, of 18, where we have not only printed books, but also educational toys resources. So uh, digital resources, uh, as a national public and research library, we are committed uh, to uh, keeping up with the technological advances and we do uh, invest a lot in our digital platforms. And we acknowledge the fact that we are a new library. We're not here to, um, to position ourselves uh, uh, at the same level as the traditional libraries, but there is something that we can add value in, which is our digital uh, strength and digital infrastructure. So uh, uh, since, since the beginning, the focus of QNL was to focus on being the library of the future, providing more digital uh, uh, content, providing um, uh, digital transformation, which actually really helped us during the COVID because our digital infrastructure was really strong and we had this developed before the pandemic uh, as we wanted to position the library as a library of the future. We have uh, three main uh, digital platforms today. Uh, one of or one is uh, of um, of the very important digital platform in the region is Qatar Digital Library, which provides users worldwide with a free access to an extensive collection of historical archival items related to Qatar Gulf region and the Middle East. It's a byproduct of our very famous strategic partnership with the British Library, and uh, it has uh, we've just celebrated the two millionth image in QDL. Uh, we also have a, a, a plenty of online resources um, 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 on different subjects and, and materials, which is accessible for all members. We have also our own digital repository, which includes digital materials, uh, digital materi digitized material by our team and uh, digital material provided by our strategic and uh, 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 local partnerships. So um, uh, library services, we have free membership for all residents, community programs and events, assistive services, ask our librarian document delivery services, research services. Um, when it comes to our strategic focus, uh, we have just revamped our strategic objectives in the library. And uh, we came up with five main strategic uh, 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 areas, keeping in mind uh, the, uh, the current situation and the um, uh, uh, trends in, in, in library uh, uh, sector as well. So our first strategic uh, focus is to position the library as a modern national library and a preeminent center of learning and research center. Here we're looking at, you know, uh, uh, performing our role as a national library, um, uh, activating our role in cultural diplomacy, uh, and also uh, engaging in more st uh, strategic multi-stakeholder uh, projects, as well as advocacy for, for, for um, um, you know, uh, libraries uh, in general. Um, our second strategic objective is to expand the QNL content and improve its discoverability through physical and digital meetings. So, Three main uh, uh, themes here we're looking at, uh, discoverability, uh, digital infrastructure, inclusion and accessibility. We also make sure that not only our building is accessible, but also our digital platforms is accessible and inclusive for any uh, people with special needs who would like to access our um, technology. This is a long-term aspiration, but we we'll always keep that in mind uh, that we want both our physical space and digital platforms, both accessible and inclusive. The third strategic objective is to provide programs and services that promote engagements <clears throat> uh, informed by local uh, needs and global trends. As I said, we are not uh, just a library, we're a national library. We, we, we have a strategic goal of, we have a cultural diplomacy role to be active in many uh, uh, um, events and global trends. So uh, we focus here on, uh, you know, uh, linking our events and programs to what's happening around us, 
whether it is locally, regionally, or globally. Um, we also, uh, locally, we're focusing also in, in attracting underserved communities. We're also focusing on how do we uh, transform digitally, which will, uh, which uh, my colleague Stefan will come uh, will cover in details um, um, after my presentation. Um, well, uh, so the fourth also uh, strategic objective is to perform an active role in supporting and promoting research in Qatar and the region. Here we're focusing on uh, repatriation uh, projects where we bring uh, back the nation's heritage, region's heritage, um, uh, we also um, uh, provide support in building infrastructure and, and capabilities uh, for, for the research sector. Um, we also, uh, one of the main, uh, uh, um, as I said, one of the main values of QNL is open access, uh, where we provide um, open access uh, grants for people to publish their research in open platforms. Um, and um, obviously also we have uh, many other research programs that we're supporting uh, locally and uh, globally as well. Um, the fifth strategic objective for QNL is to achieve operational excellence through refining processes, investing in people, and improving building and spaces. Here, our focus mainly is to build the profession of librarianship. Um, uh, the idea of libraries is uh, fairly new to, 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 to the country. Uh, uh, we had, um, um, you know, before Qatar National Library, there was an old library, but actually we don't have a, 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 a uh, and establish the profession of librarianship. So our role also is to establish that, also to help other institutions uh, to um, to develop their librarians, whether it is schools or uh, other other local libraries or public libraries in the country. So um, that's it about our strategic uh, focus. Um, so um, uh, a bit of final remarks. Uh, so while our vision is to become one of the world's uh, preeminent center of learning, research, and culture, strategically we'll continue to focus on transforming the library in a, uh, into a library of the future, providing global access to Arab uh, history and culture for the purpose of knowledge sharing. Uh, in line with the Qatar national vision, uh, um, we, 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 we do support uh, the human uh, uh, development uh, uh, aspect of the vision. And we look forward to um, continually uh, perform our mission to inspire positive thought and action among children and young adults who promise to shape the future of the country. Perfect. Good morning and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Stefana Eipert. I am the director of the uh, Heritage Library in Qatar National Library. Uh, you may know the Qatar National Library, which is a wonderful building in Doha, in the education city. And today I would like to present you our collection through a very different angle to present uh, our approach and our strategy in terms of digitization of these uh, historical collections. Uh, actually, I will show you some items and I will go quickly. Uh, because I will come back to them again uh, after a short presentation to explain you how we use that because uh, doing digitization is not the end by it, of the process by itself. It's the most important if to ask yourself, what are you going to do with that? So I will show you some items to give you a, an idea for those of you who didn't get the chance to come to see our permanent exhibition in Qatar National Library to, to give you a glance of our treasuries and then I will come back to more the, the strategy. So let me start with this wonderful uh, Quranic page, which is uh, what we call Ijazi style, which is even very early page of uh, Quranic leaves of the Quran, uh, something like uh, end of 17th century, very early of the 18th century. And uh, it's not even what we is, is famous as a Kufic style, we know, which is a kind of uh, very uh, uh, important aspect of the Arabic calligraphy. This is very really the, the beginnings. And it's very interesting to see such kind of items and uh, very rare. And uh, we call that Ijazi Quran. It's for the first period, I would say maximum one century after the death of the prophet. And uh, we have the chance to have few of these pages in QNL. Then we have other examples of very early Qurans like this one a little bit later from uh, nine or 10th century. 
and uh, this one with wonderful example also. But I will come back to, to this example later on. Oh, this one was very nice, where has been written in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in, um, in Erat, sorry, Erat, the city. And um, I mean, we cannot escape to think a few seconds about the situation of the cultural heritage in Afghanistan today. But uh, we have also this nice example a little bit later. And uh, speaking still about manuscript, I swap to another topic just to give you some ideas. And uh, we have also very interesting manuscripts with the history of science. This is more actually history of mechanic, because Arabs were famous for history of science, but they were also very good for mechanics, engineering. And uh, this is very interesting manuscripts from the famous uh, Arab authors from the uh, end of the golden age uh, in Turkey. And uh, it was called Al Jazari, and he was doing Man, he wrote a famous manuscript to explain the various kinds of device and mechanical machines. This is another one which is interesting, which explains how to extract uh, the blood from the sick people. And I swap again because I will come back to these things. So we have a nice collection of maps. Here we have a wonderful example of the a map from the, uh, uh, the Gulf and the Arabic Peninsula. And uh, let me go to another topic, another kind of item. And uh, we have this. Uh, nice collection of pictures from uh, uh, 19 and beginning of 20th century. We have a huge collection of uh, what we call Orientalist picture. This is the port of Beirut. And uh, unfortunately, it's not so nice today because you know the, the very strong and uh, dramatic blast which happened just uh, one year ago in Beirut. And the port of Beirut now is much more worse in condition. But uh, just uh, as uh, to give you an information, Qatar National Library and Qatar Foundation have been helping as much as they could the uh, uh, Lebanese library after the blast. And uh, we even gave a big grant to the restoration of the uh, uh, two or three biggest libraries in Beirut, the National Library of Lebanon and the Bibliothèque Orientale with one of the biggest collection in Beirut. But it's not the topic today. I just wanted to, to show this kind of picture. Another example of nice picture from the Dome of the Rock in, in uh, uh, Jerusalem. And uh, surprisingly, if you are expecting only old picture, we also try to have also a kind of a strategy of acquisitions of uh, modern artifacts. And for example, we collect this kind of uh, historical items, historical photography from uh, Jerusalem, but also we are interested also to collect, I would say the heritage of tomorrow, which is modern productions from an artist, a French artist working in Jerusalem. And uh, we, we bought that picture from him and uh, a full collection of pictures from Qatar and uh, some countries in the Arab, uh, the Arab region. So you see, we are not focused only in historical items and uh, we have also to prepare the heritage of tomorrow. So we, we work on that too. And uh, to, speaking about more modern items, I wanted to share also one of our latest acquisition, which is a very interesting painting from uh, an Algerian artist called Baya. She started to be quite famous now, even if she's dead since a uh, few decades, but uh, she was uh, not very educated in artists uh, or uh, not a, a very high level of education or whatever. She came by chance in Paris and uh, she met Picasso and Matisse and then she became fully part of the avant-garde and avant-gardist uh, movement and the milieu in Paris in the 70s. And she's called Baya, and uh, she produced very nice paintings. She was from Algeria, and like this gouache. And uh, we, by the way, we will have an exhibition next year about uh, uh, Baya paintings in Qatar National Library. So this was uh, just a short overview of a few of our items. I didn't put the most famous, but I chose them on purpose to, to show you now what do we do with that? Yes, we have thousands of items here in this library. That means we have also thousands of digital files. And what? Uh, collecting digital files is not my uh, my task. Uh, my task is more to be in charge of the original items. But we have here a big department for digitization, and we produce digital files and uh, of all these items. But we have to see why we do that and to have a, a clear strategy. So I will try to explain you. And coming back to some of these items, when do we, when and how we try to use them. The first point I would say is maybe preservation. 
uh, in the past, when you wanted to preserve a collection in case of disaster or if it's stolen or destroyed by a war or a, a, a kind of a natural disaster, and since the antiquity, many libraries unfortunately has been destroyed, um, thanks to some technique of first it was drawing in, uh, in historical times, then it was microfilms and photography. And today we preserve also the collection by replicas by doing digital replicates and digital files like those I showed you today, and uh, which are uh, as a preservation uh, substitute to, to, to keep them. So we have also this duty in the National Library for uh, using digitization as preservation, but it's not the topic of my talk because it's become very complicated concept because also we have to think, how are we going to preserve that new artifact even digital that we are producing and then a national library has a duty to have a, a strategy for digital preservation but i will not go further with that and i would like to speak more how do we engage with our publics and users with uh, with these collections so obviously the first thing which comes to to your mind is access it's important because access digital access has very advantages First, you don't manipulate the originals, so it's already part of preservation because some of these items I showed you have uh, some uh, almost more than one millinery, so you can imagine that we cannot give them like that in the reading room, like we give a, a novel for a, a, a basic user. So access is, even inside of the same library, is a good way to it's one of the main way to use these images. But obviously, we don't limit our access to inside of our library. We have, like most of the big libraries, a digital repository where we have all these images linked with our catalog. And it means that everywhere in the world, even if you are in today in America or wherever, in Australia, in anywhere in the world, you can have access by internet to our catalog. And you can have, if the document is digitized, you have access to the digital files. And this is very helpful in terms of access, not only for the scholars and academics, but for everyone. You can discover the collection, you can enjoy the collection, you can use them, you can download them. As long as it is in the public domain, it means that it's not protected by a copyright, which would uh, not allow us to digitize them. But usually in the heritage library, working with old material and old books, we, uh, we have uh, the right to use them because it's most of the time public domain. The few examples I showed you, including the one you have now in the screen, we get the approval from the, from the rights owner for copyright. So that's one of the first aspect, but uh, that's not all. Obviously, uh, we can do also research, not only access and read, but research. And uh, for example, uh, this, uh, 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 these two uh, very early currents are part of a very rare corpus we have here in Qatar National Library, which is the, uh, we call that early currents. That means uh, from the seven, eight, and ninth centuries. It's very rare, unique, single sheets most of the time. And such kind of uh, early leaves of the Quran are spread in various uh, libraries in the world or Islam museum with the uh, Islamic section. And uh, for example, when I speak about research, I am thinking, for example, in that specific case of a project we have with a, a, a team of experts in Germany called Corpus Coranicum, and they are studying this writing, the codicology, the, the physical aspect. We do also ink analysis of this uh, Korans, and then we can, this kind of research, which is a very long process for a two or three years collaboration project, then this is will be shared in a specific platform, which you can have access already actually on internet called Corpus Coranicum. And this is also done in close cooperation with the American institution. In that case, for example, I'm working now with the, uh, the Smithsonian Institution, the Freire and Sackler Museum for a project of to, to do the same kind of research on their corpus. And uh, then we can, have a larger uh, basis of studies, we can even discover, which is very interesting, that some page of the Quran we have are coming from one 
unique Quran in, for example, in eighth century, and one of the page of the same Quran could be in their collection. So we can identify, I would say, sisters. So you can see the added value of such kind of research. So that's, I would say, high level research for very few experts. But uh, if I come back to that one, uh, I have another project to use this file because it's, so this is a kind of mechanism to explain you. I, I think this one was for blood and uh, extractions or it could be any kind of machines. Al Jazari in his um, manuscripts explain how to produce any kind of uh, automatic machine, including clock machine to, 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 to bring you the tea in your cup, some, some system to, to put the water up and uh, any kind of uh, mechanism, I would say, and mechanical engineering. So sometimes if you look at that, it's very nice, but it's quite difficult to understand actually. And then you have the, the text, which is not very helpful always, even if it's uh, well written in Arabic, the understanding of the text itself is not always easy because it's old formulas and uh, paleography and so on. And still it's not as, uh, as clear as uh, when you buy a, a machine today. Uh, I would say, so we have to do something else to engage more with the public. You can imagine this is very nice, could be interesting for the young generation to discover this kind of uh, advanced, very strong advancements of the engineering and science in the 13th century, for example, in that case, uh, in the Islamic world, but uh, you have to bring something more to help people to understand, otherwise, you can just explain, but it's a little bit dry and doesn't, doesn't go enough in the, in the real engagement. So for example, with that manuscript, uh, and there are various copies of that manuscript. So we, there is one, there is few pages also very rare and very old in the Smithsonian, also in Washington DC. And we are working now on a project together, how to make that more engaging for the public and mostly for the young public to discover uh, science and to be attracted to learn more about modern science, but understanding that it is linked with uh, some knowledge in the past. And uh, in that case, for example, we are working with uh, some experts in digital humanities to, from that page and from the text, which we have to explain to them, they can make a kind of animation in 3D. Unfortunately, I don't have yet examples to show you because we are just starting the project. But we have an expert, for example, in that case, in Singapore University, working of making the machine now from that, from a 2D drawings, even to a 3D with animations to explain to people how it works, actually. Otherwise, you see just a nice drawing and you don't understand the mechanism behind. So this is another way of engagement, you see, to work with the public to make them to understand better this kind of documents. Otherwise, it's not so easy to understand. Beside of that, which is more like a project like we call digital engagement, we, we also have some projects with those kind of maps also. Even in that case, for example, it's easy to understand. Sometimes we have maps where the place of the names of the cities are not so obvious. If I speak, which is not the case here of the famous Idrisi map, for example, which is a map from this famous uh, engineer traveler, Arabic engineer and traveler, is maps, which is a kind of a copy later on complicated story. But I mean, you have a map which is difficult to understand. So again, we want to work with the expert and to engage more with the public to show them if they click on the city, even if they don't know where it is, they can under, have the equivalence today and they can have information of the place. So that's also a way to use better the, the digital files, not only as uh, you see like reproduction and I go through images, 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 but how to make that more with an added value to help for the, for the users. Here again, for example, this image, which I mentioned from the port of Beirut, I mean, we use it also for communication because we have this big campaign to help the libraries of Beirut after the blast and uh, we show them, we can do display of that. And then people understand more how you can use the heritage to the modern world today and to explain to people such kind of uh, changes. The same when we did events last month in the library about um, um, uh, Palestine in general, there was a week of Palestine in, uh, 
in Qatar National Library and in Qatar Foundation, we had the opportunity to show this uh, wonderful collection of pictures, but not only in the way of like, uh, well, it's a nice orientalist picture. I can, I would like a copy to put on my wall, but it's it's also interesting for people to understand more the context, the historical context. And then in that case, it's full of very precious information. Uh, look at this picture, for example. It's a building with the very old decorations. Some of these decorations may have changed today. So you have then all the archaeologists and the historians of uh, um, history of architecture who are discovering something very passionating in that. For example, uh, recently we shared some historical picture we have from Aleppo with a group of experts in charge of the restoration of Aleppo. And they discovered that in our picture from the 19th century or beginning of 20th century, uh, they can learn a lot of information about old Aleppo, which they did not know. And that helped them for the restoration of the city. So you see all these things are helping the public to engage, to understand. But I, I just want to conclude to insist doing digitization is one point, but that's not everything. You have to see what are you going to do with that in terms of access, in terms of research, in terms of engagement, in terms of communication and exhibition, just to show you various ways how to use those kind of uh, artifacts. And I hope that I have been able through the same kind of image, which I showed you first, like a, a, a nice display, then showing each one, how we use them for a specific project, and uh, we change completely the perspective. Well, I hope I have not been too long and not too boring, but I hope you catch the, the, the aim of that. Doing digitization is one aspect, but the most important is to do what are you going to do with that and how are you going to engage with the public? And that's why in Qatar National Library, we, close, we work very closely between various departments. Myself as a director of Heritage Library, so I am the custodian of these collections, but then we have the Department for Digital Engagement and we work very closely to see how can we engage more to the public using in a very clever way with added value all this uh, digital heritage which is digital to be used with for the best and to engage more for the public and to be sure they understand more the context and the perspectives thank you and i hope it was helpful for you